Um, all right, um, I just got a signal, so we can start. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to my talk, an introduction to Symphony Messenger here at the IPC. Uh, it's my first time at the IPC, so really excited to finally be here. Even though I live in Berlin and I could basically come here every year, I still got around to it. Um, so what will you get is a talk that I gave before, I think roughly a year ago, but you will get this nice new version, Symphony 4.3 ready, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the Symphony Messenger component, when it was first introduced in Symphony 4.1, it actually changed quite a lot. And yeah, Symphony 4.3 came out uh, last Friday, so this is brand new, it's when you want to start, this is how you want to do it, and if you already started an old project with uh, Symphony Messenger, you will probably already see a few things that look a little bit different or completely different even. So um, let's dive in. Um, first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Dennis. As I said, I live here in Berlin. I work at Sensor Labs Germany. We also have offices in Cologne and Hamburg. And what we do is basically we go to client projects and uh, we help them migrate to Symphony or um, use Symphony components and, and sometimes not even do Symphony at all. It's just PHP projects where we help with our expertise with uh, good architecture and stuff like that. And we also do workshops and tutorials and this kind of stuff. So if you have something difficult with PHP where you kind of want to have additional input, then you can just call us and, and we will look into that. Um, all right, before I want to start, because I don't know how familiar everyone is with Symfony, I, I figured I, I'd just give a very, very short introduction of um, Symfony as, as a full stack framework, because that is probably what everyone knows. Um, if you write Symfony, you will probably know like um, that, that, that you get a, something like this, a controller that, that basically takes a request um, and then you will make this request, you, you extract the data and, and you will call some services. In this case, it's uh, a doctrine repository, for example, to get some data. And then you pass this data into a template, you make nice HTML or whatever, and then you send out a response. Um, so th th this is basically every other framework for PHP out there. And, and th that is for people associate with Symfony, like, like I have this framework where I can do this kind of stuff. Um, but actually Symfony is a lot more. You also have separate components, also not that new of a concept, like Zen Framework had this as well, or has this as well. Um, but the nice thing about that is that you basically can pull out most Symfony components and use them in your project no matter if you already use Symfony or not. And so Symfony Messenger is, is uh, no exception. Basically, if, if you have a Zen Framework, one project that, that is basically way old, you, you can still decide, yeah, I want to have this Messenger because we already use PHP 7, and I like it, and I want to use it, and, and you can just do it by basically doing this. Composer require Messenger. The talk focuses on, on how to use it in a Symfony project, naturally, um, be, because that's where things are easier, because all the configuration is provided. Um, but, but essentially, what, what you see here is, is the same thing when you use it standalone. All you have to do is do most of the configuration um, in a little bit different way by basically just writing it yourself as PHP code instead of having this nice configuration layer. So um, even in a modern Symfony project, you will probably use this command as well because Symfony 4 tried to basically have a very small initial footprint and then you add all those components that you need when you need them. So basically you get a very, very small project at first and then when you decide, I want, for example, templating because I want to write a traditional website where I have HTML, then I just get the templating engine in and, and use that. And if I want to just have an API where I don't need any templating, that, then it won't even be there at all and, and I, I w it won't bother me. Which is a neat concept if you have like all these ideas of microservices, for example, where, where you want very small contained applications, uh, you can basically achieve that. So yeah, in a new Symfony project, you will probably install the messenger with Composer Require, you will get this. 
the thing that will be different in, in your standalone project is you won't see the bit at the bottom, the configuration uh, for those here. Um, this is the Flex plugin from Symphony 4. Um, it's a composer plugin that recognizes whenever you install a Symphony package that has a so-called recipe. And a recipe is basically just telling you like, oh yeah, there, there's certain configuration that has to be applied and it will do it automatically for you. So basically, what this does is write all the configuration that you would have manually write yourself and, and, and register the bundle. It will do all this stuff for you. That, that's it. And then what it also writes right after that is what's next thing, which is really nice because it already gives you an idea of, yeah, what do I do with this messenger thing? And you can see a few things that we will talk about. Um, the, the message bus, for example, is highlighted in green. This is the service ID that, that we will use when, whenever we want to send a message. You have some transport thingy here. We will get to that. And you also get the info for the documentation, which is um, pretty good if, if you just want to see some code snippets, how, how to actually use stuff like that. And before we dive in, finally, one last disclaimer, uh, the, the component is marked as experimental right now. Um, as I said, it was introduced in Symphony 4.1. Uh, we now have 4.3. Um, the, the experimental doesn't mean that um, it's very brittle and, and, and I shouldn't use it in production. All the experimental flag tells you is between minor versions, we might change things that break the backwards compatibility. Symphony is usually very, very strict about backwards compatibility inside minor versions um, be, because we, we basically want to make sure that people can update without breaking their code as long as it's not a major version jump. Uh, but with those experimental components, we basically allow ourselves to have this component in there very early on and you can already use it. Uh, but we might make changes so uh, when you use this experimental component, you, with your next minor update, you might have to do adjustments. And the messenger component uses it a lot. So, uh, so and, and it's still quite gentle. So that when you have a very basic use case for this, um, you might not even notice, but especially under the hood, that there are a lot of changes that happen throughout the, um, the development. And for those of you who still think that experimental so sounds a little bit too risky, um, I I'm not saying that it's guaranteed that Symphony 4.4 will make it stable, but it's very, very likely because Symphony 4.4 will also be the, the same thing that Symphony 5 will be um, because we have a time-based release. So the 4.4 and 5.0 are f basically feature, uh, not, not just, like they have the same feature set. But Symphony 5 will fraud all the deprecations, so it will fraud all the old stuff, and, and, and we can start from a fresh new slate from all the new things we introduced. And that's why it should be stable, because then we can't really make any changes to it, or at least it will be a lot more difficult. All right, let's start with the whole thing. Um, when we have a messenger, what's the first thing that we will need? It's obviously a message to pass around. Um, so th this is basically the, the very basic construct that we have. And this is just one example how a message can look. Um, what, what's interesting to know is, um, first of all, that this is just how I wrote this message. You can also use just a class that has public properties. You can use getters and setters, for example, if you like. Um, as, as long as it's basically an object that contains some data that, that is basically what you want to send around, the, 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 the information that something needs to act upon, then it's fine. And you can also see that this is just a class with, with no hook into the framework itself. It, it's independent from a framework. This is your message. Um, I, I will draw a lot of comparisons to the Symphony Event Dispatcher component. Um, if you think of a Symphony event, for example, which is also a kind of message, um, this has to extend the abstract event object because there are some things in there that uh, the Symphony event dispatcher needs to act on. And with the messenger, you don't get this. Th this is your object and yours only. So you could basically move it around to different frameworks very easily. Okay, just this message is, is probably not helping very much. We want to do something with it. And the first thing that is basically already hinted at, at the what's next thing is our message bus. Basically, the thing that we send the message over to something else. The, this is 
doesn't really do anything with the message itself. It, it just figures out where to send this message so something else can act upon it. This is the interface for it. Um, this is a framework class. So the, the message bus is basically symphony through and through. This is where you hook into the framework. And so the, the interface itself is, is provided by symphony component and the class itself is provided by the component. So you will, will not change the actual message bus implementation. And you don't have to because it takes a message via the dispatch method and then it just sends it to something else later on and, and then you get things back. Um, this is also where you can already see uh, some of the changes that happened with this interface, for example, through the versions. The stamps and the envelope is something that previously did not exist. Um, but we, we can look at that later. Um, another thing, because I already mentioned the event dispatcher, this is basically um, how an event dispatcher will now look like. Previously, it ha had a little different uh, look, li like you just named the, the event itself in, with a string, and then passed the event object. Um, now with PSR 14 and uh, with Symphony 4.3, they, they changed the event dispatcher to be PSR 14 compliant. It has the same look without the stamps and envelope stuff. So we're, we're still very closely to, to event dispatching stuff here. This is then what it looks like when you use the message bus in a service. Um, you pass in the, the interface into a constructor. Symphony will figure out that, okay, I have to pass in a message bus instance here. And then you can just use it in your method by calling the dispatch. And for example, here I just create my uh, message object and, and, and it will be dispatched. Um, pretty familiar, just like the event dispatcher. The nice thing is because most of the times you will do this in your controller, you can, when you extend Symphony's abstract controller, it provides a nice little helper method where you don't even have to worry about getting the message bus or anything. You can just call this helper method dispatch message and then the controller behind the scenes will basically fetch the service for you. So a nice little convenience thing. When we do that, things won't work. We will actually get an exception. And this is basically the first thing where, where we uh, split paths with the event dispatcher component. Because an event dispatcher, if, if nothing handles the event, it, it just won't care because why would it? It's just an event and, and if no one wants to act on it, it's fine. With a message, the, the idea is that actually, yeah, this message needs to be handled by, by something. So it will actually throw an error. You can obviously have a message bus that is also an event dispatcher where you don't want a handler and you can just pass in a configuration flag and say this is a message bus that I want to use as an event bus and, and just say please, please allow that no handler is called and then this will work. But out of the box it will assume that actually you want to handle all your events. And so what we need is something to, to act on our events which is aptly called the message handler. Um, before I actually look at the message handler, um, I, I, I want to take a, a very short detour because I'm not sure if everyone knows this concept of invocables in PHP. It's not that new. Um, I should have looked it up. PHP 5.5, 5.6 or something. I'm not exactly sure, but, but it's still PHP 5 thing. Um, so any PHP class can have this magic method invoke and that makes a class invocable. This class can still have a regular constructor where you pass in, for example, services. Um, you can also have arguments in that invoke method, just like you would have with any other method. Um, the only thing it does is when you basically have a variable that, that, that is an instance of your class, you can just put those braces around it and basically that invoke method is called. And, and um, if it's an echo, you will see the echo, for example. Or if it returns something, you can pass it on to something else as well. Um, so that, that, that's all it is. It's a standard PHP feature and you could even, if you like lots of braces, you could do fancy stuff like this with just calling it right after instantiating it. Um, and wh why do I tell you this? Obviously the message handler uses invoke. Um, so th this is the default way of writing a message handler. First thing first, we can already see that there's again no framework related code in there. This is our own class, just like with the message. So it's framework independent. 
Um, so if you basically want to write code that, that is like, like DDD style fancy thing where you decouple from the framework, the message compo messenger component is actually really nice for that because both the message itself and the handler that, that processes the message is, is not really coupled to the framework. You can use it anywhere else. And basically what will happen is that Symfony's container will collect all these uh, message handlers um, either by configuration when you define a tag um, or if, if you don't want to do that, th there's a marker interface called message handler interface. If your class implements that, then all those classes implementing the interface will be collected by, by the container and then passed into the message bus like those are handlers. They, they react on a message. Once you get a message, this is, for example, the class to call when take screenshot message happens. Um, so basically, by saying which message the uh, which message the invoke method takes, we basically define the routing of which handler should react to which message. And then you can, as, as I said, you can have uh, a constructor with services, for example. Um, you can even pass in a message bus into this handler and then send another message right from where you handled this message and have these chains of messages being passed around, which is really nice. And if you want to have different kind of message handlers, for example, if you don't mind hooking a little bit more into the framework, you can also implement the message subscriber interface, which only requires you to implement this public static function get handled messages. And there in an array, or I, I do it with a yield statement, you basically say, whenever this message uh, is received, I want this method to take it over. And then you, you for example, don't have to use the invoke. You can use this with a message handler interface as well, or with, even without using the interface. Um, basically, when you define your service and, and you apply the tag, this is a message handler, you can pass in the information which method should be called. You, give it a, you can give it a priority if you like, just like with the event dispatcher. It's kind of iffy to, to have like, like correct order of, of handlers be, being uh, in the configuration somehow, just have order matter in, in, in handlers, but it, it happens. It, that's why the event dispatcher has it. It, it. It's just something that you might need, even if purists would say that th this is not according to, to the original pattern or something. Um, it's fine. And you can even apply additional configuration on these handlers. For example, you can say, I only want this handler to apply on a certain message bus because you can have multiple message buses. Why that makes sense, I will explain later. And yeah, so, so basically, um, th this is a code that takes a message, you have the message itself, and you have something that passes the message around. So we're actually done, we have a nice thing. But all this happens synchronously inside your PHP process, just like with the event dispatcher, you never leave this PHP process, which is kind of a limiting factor. And if you want to have a message bus, you probably want to send those messages to an external system. Um, for example, a different application or the same application, but, but in a like command line um, thing. And for that, we have the so-called transports. They basically are the replacement for, for the handlers. So either you, you want to handle your message right away or you, you want to send it away via transport. Is basically what I'm saying. And the transport is made up of two things, sender and receiver. Quite obvious why, because you want to send those messages away and also you want to receive those messages from this transport. Um, so you don't have to write this yourself. Symfony provides transport. It will provide the senders and receivers, but you can write your own. Um, the documentation used to have an example like, I, I want to have a sender that writes something into a CSV file, like a, a new row, and then I have a receiver that just reads the CSV file, and it's not really asynchronous. Uh, you probably also don't want multiple services to write into the CSV file, but yeah, you, you could come up with different transports than Symfony provides. But for the most parts, um, with Symfony 4.3, you, you get most of the common ones that, that you want to use. So initially, we only had the MQP transport. MQP is a messaging protocol that is most famously used by RabbitMQ. 
Um, this is the um, admin UI that basically when you send a message, you see in the graph like, oh yeah, I have a message that's ready. And when someone consumes it, you, you get the blue graph, which tells you like, oh yeah, someone took it, but it, they didn't acknowledge that they actually processed the message. So it's kind of in limbo. Um, and once they acknowledge like, yeah, I actually processed this, then the message is completely gone and, and, and no one else will handle it. Um, so th this is really nice because now you send the message away to, to this message queue and you can collect it whenever you want and, and in whatever fashion you want. Um, another way to, to have asynchronous transport is using the Redis transport. Um, and yeah, it's basically what you would expect. Um, it, it will just write this message into some, some Redis storage um, and you can just retrieve it from there as well. What you can already see is um, something that I will point out later on. That message is, is basically a PHP object that, that's serialized um, and you get a timestamp and stuff like that. And the third one, which is really handy, is the, the Doctrine transport, which um, Doctrine is a database abstraction in, in PHP that, that basically everyone needs, uh, everyone uses. And um, yeah, it will basically create a table for you where all the messages are stored. Um, this is what it looks like in, in an entity relationship diagram kind of thing. This is what it would look like in, in more of a table fashion. Um, it writes the body, which is basically your, your message object that, that is serialized, some, some headers with additional information. You can specify multiple queues in, in case you only want to collect messages from a certain queue and some timestampy stuff as well. And yeah, so, so basically this allows you to send your messages away and, and, and handle them at some later point by just reading one of those transport wherever the message is stored. Um, the only downside is you, you can see this with Doctrine right away. If Doctrine wants to write into that table, it probably needs that table in the first place. And, and how does it know where to, to get this? Um, there, there's a command line tool that, that Symfony provides. And one of the commands provided from the messenger component with Symfony 4.3 is set up transports. It basically goes through your configuration, sees which transports you use, and will set things up for you. With Doctrine, it's obvious that you will need it because if, those, if this table is not there, then things will not work and, and you will get uh, like connection errors. With RabbitMQ, for example, it's not as obvious because usually when you write something and, and the queue is not there with RabbitMQ, it will just create it for you just, just on the fly. Um, but if you read before you create something, then that queue is not there, and then you can run into problems. So even with MQP and Redis, it will create all the stuff for you, and, and it's there for whenever you want to consume or write into it. Um, consuming is, is the right word. Like, like now we send the message away. What, what, what do we do with it later on when we want to handle it? Um, if your Symfony application, either the same one that sends the message away or a different one, wants to read this um, message, it has to configure the transport again. The, the receiver will take the message out and, and the messenger consume command is responsible for this. This is basically something that you have running in the background either on a separate node or on the same server. Um, it's just a command line process. You can limit the number of messages it should receive, uh, the, the, the memory limit used, um, the time limit. Basically, this is for PHP because it still produces memory leaks sometimes, either by itself or by your code. So if you have this thing running all the time, it will probably get slow, it will get faulty, and, and so you should actually just let this thing run for a short amount of time and then have it spawn again. So for example, you would use supervisor to, to make sure that you have always some worker running at some point uh, that consumes these messages for you. And yeah, so basically this thing will go through the same cycle. It will read the message, will get the message back um, fr from, from the transport, pass it in, into a PHP object again, and then it will send it to the message bus for you, and then it will go through the message bus. But this time it will not be sent to a transport. This time it will be handled again. And yeah, as I already mentioned, um, that basically you have a message leaving a PHP system and then re-entering maybe a different PHP <laughs> process. So um, you, you can't just have these PHP classes running around all the time. You have to serialize them somehow. Um, by default, the, the PHP serialization process is used. If you want to send it to something that's not a PHP uh, command, 
but something else, then you might want to have a format that, that is more palatable for, for other languages, for example, so you can use the symphony serializer to basically create a JSON representation of the message. This is what used to be the default up until Symfony 4.3. All right, so now we have this basically complete picture that you have a message, you dispatch it via the bus, and the bus decides, should I send it to a transport or should I send it to a message handler to process it right away? The question is, how? How does the, the message bus decide which, what to do with the message? And basically now we have to look at the configuration uh, and it will hopefully become obvious. You, you basically define a set of transports that your application knows and uses. Sync is, is just the synchronous uh, transport that basically means I call the handler right away. And then I have some async transport. Th those are just names, by the way. You can give them whatever names you like. You can use the same, for example, RabbitMQ DSN and just name different queues on the same connection, or you can have multiple connections, for example, um, if you want to send a message both to an asynchronous process that, or as, as to a message broker that your worker reads, and additionally to something else just for kind of logging purposes, for example, or for a different tool to also act on this message, then you can basically send the same message to multiple buses or to multiple queues and you can send it to RabbitMQ and Doctrine at the same time if you want. So instead of just this one string, you basically can also present an array of all the places where you want to send this message to. And then you can just define whatever message should go through which transport. So it's not the bus that decides what, where to send things to. It's actually you decided based on a message, which makes sense. Like no matter what bus I send this message over, um, I usually want to send it to a transport. Not always. In those cases, I, I can again limit basically which bus does which and, and which message is handled by, by which bus and from which transport or handler is called. So you can also configure this stuff, but by default, this is basically how it goes. Whenever a message is sent through a bus, you want to send it to some transport. And the obvious thing that will happen is things will fail. Like we, At the beginning, we saw that if we don't have a handler provided in our application, then basically it will fail right away. And if our consuming application also don't has, has a handler, then it will fail also. And the nice thing that Symfony 4.3 brings with the messenger component is so-called retry strategies. So on each transport, you can define what the retry strategy is. Um, the, those are the default settings. Um, you have three retries. The first retry happens after one second, and then it multiplies, so next time it's two seconds, then four seconds to basically uh, give the message queue some, some time to, to relax a little bit um, and, and just not hammer out the message three times in a row, and oh, it doesn't work, just, just go away. Um, so yeah, basically you, you can retry a few times, and basically sometimes you don't even want to do that because you already know that, um, if I handle this message at a later point, it will just fail again. I, I just know it because it's, it's broken or it's no longer valid. Then I can basically, in my application, throw this exception or extend from that exception for a different one. And then the messenger knows, like, yeah, no, no need in retrying. I, I will just give up right away. And another thing, which is actually really handy, because after those three retries, it will actually discard the message and it's gone, which can be kind of annoying if, if you actually know like this is an important event. I wanted to send out an email to, to a client and now that I don't even know what message that was. So you probably want to store those failed messages somehow. And what you do is you specify a failure transport that just um, defines a transport that, that you defined. In this case, it's just using Doctrine with the default connection and the queue name fault, but it could be anything else. And then it basically automatically f will put things into this failed queue and will not do anything when those free tries, uh, free retries um, basically failed. And then you can inspect this failed queue later on by, by using these commands like show and retry and remove. All right, um, almost done. So we, we, we basically learned how to send messages, how to receive messages, what to do when things go wrong. Um, 
We still don't really know why, why we would need multiple message buses, and this is where middlewares come in. Um, or middleware, sorry, there's no plural, as um, English people always like to point that out. Um, so it's middleware is already the plural. Um, by default, the Symphony Messenger will have these middleware. If you're already familiar with the component, we will see that up until 4.3, it looked completely different. Um, this is one of the bigger changes that happened under the hood. So if you don't have your own middleware, you don't probably care. Even if you have your own middleware, then likely it will not affect things much because the order is roughly still the same. Um, one thing that's missing is the logging middleware that, that basically um, now happens inside other middlewares. You pass in a logger and that, that will do it for you. So it doesn't need to be a different middleware. Um, and the, the things in the beginning are a little bit different. So ju just to have an idea, what, what, what do those middlewares do? The add bus name stamp is, is basically just giving you an, an idea of which bus handled this message. So it adds j just this information in there. It doesn't really actively do anything on your message. The dispatch after current bus is kind of interesting. Um, it basically helps you with transactional stuff. So. If you send out a message and then some later handlers, for example, do, do something and, and you have an error, you, you basically send out a message that might not be valid anymore. For example, you said, yeah, I want to send out a message when I create a new user and then I, I store the user in the database later on and oh, it, it failed and, and now I send out this message that I, I should send out an email at, but the user doesn't exist and I have this weird state of things break. And so basically what you can do with the dispatch after current bus middleware is you say like, actually only send out the message after everything in the bus happens. So I make sure that actually there was no error after sending the thing away. Um, failed message processing middleware is just what happens when something failed. Sent message is, uh, I already have the icons up there. It's, it's just what you would expect. This middleware is actually checking like, should I send this middleware out via a transport? Um, again, it checks the configuration for, from the message bus, like, yeah, is this message um, for this transport? Oh, yeah, it is, so I send it away. And it also checks, oh, did I receive this message, for example, f by, by consuming uh, from RabbitMQ? Um, it will already have a received stamp, so the send message says, actually, I received this from, from a queue. Probably you want this to go to the handler and not just send it in loop all the time to the RabbitMQ. So you don't have to do anything for that to work. It, it just recognizes it for you. And handle message is basically the same. Um, if it, the message wasn't handled, it goes into this middleware and says, okay, I should handle this. And this is also where your configuration applies that if I don't want to have a handler, you can just in this middleware pass in a flag uh, during construction, say, yeah, I, I allow no handlers and then it, it will just ignore it and, and will go through and everything is fine. So yeah, those are the default middlewares. What you can already grasp from that image is that, um, let me go back, um, obviously the order of this middleware stack matters because if, if I add bus name and, and do stuff after I send the message, then it's probably too late. Or if I handle the message right here and then I find out later on I want to send this, then yeah, I already processed the message. I don't need to send it away. So this is an ordered stack of middleware. So you have to make sure that whatever own middleware you write or whatever other middleware you add, that it is at the right place inside the stack. Um, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So I already mentioned stamps, for example, the, the add bus name stamp thing. Um, so let's dive into that for a little bit. When you dispatch a message via the bus, um, it will automatically be packed into an envelope for you. An envelope is just a wrapper class in, in PHP um, that basically contains your message and also some stamps, which are just context, basically, context objects, just like um, the message, it, it has some additional info of like, was this thing received or handled or anything? It, it's, it's metadata specific to um, a handler or to, to a middleware mostly. And yeah, so once it's in an envelope and you can do that yourself, you don't have to wait for the message bus to do that. Um, you can just uh, basically wrap it in an envelope and send it away if you want to. Um, for example, if you want to apply your own stamp. And then later on, each middleware either checks a stamp or applies a stamp, which you can later use 
to get things from. And that, that's why I put the last one in there. The handle stamp is, is the best example for this. If you basically have a handler that has a return value, this return value is lost. Um, can, can you still? Okay, so, sorry. Um, so yeah, basically, if you handle the message um, in your handler and the handler returns, for example, a token, then how do you get this token value that we returned? You always get an envelope back or anything, so, so um, you also don't want all the other middlewares to interrupt. Instead, what happens is this return value is stored in this handle stamp, and once the message bus ran, you basically extract the, the, the stamp and then get the return value back from that. And this is what it looks like. So if you dispatch the message, you get the envelope back. This is what we saw in the message bus interface before. Then we just check for the last handle stamp that, that the envelope had, which is usually just one because you usually have only one handler or maybe you want to check for a specific one if you want to, but this is the most generic case. And then you just get the result from this handle stamp, basically the return value from your handler class and you can just use it, in this case, the token. So those stamps are basically a neat way to both the, the middleware can um, get some meta information and, and send it back to you. And also, you can send some context information to the middleware. For example, if you use the validation middleware, you might want to use validation groups. You can just basically create an envelope, put on the validation stem and say, I only want to validate all the, the things that are part of the registration, for example, and not all the other ones. So instead of just having one huge global thing where, where you put all the metadata in or passing around a huge context array, you basically have very contextually applied stamps, which is really neat. And also it factors in nicely with the whole message sending um, like metaphor having stamps and envelopes. So it also kind of feels right to, to have this kind of syntax. So I already mentioned the, the, the middleware is, is uh, important where, where you apply it. Um, by default, your middleware is always applied in the middle between all of these uh, wh when you configure them. What you can do is you can basically tell the messenger, like, I, I don't want to use the default middleware, just throw them out, and then you can build your own stack. And this is basically what you want to get if, if you, or this is what you need when you want to have me message buses in, in your system that have specific functionality. So if you're an avid fan of like CQS, for example, with a command bus and a query bus and an event bus, the event bus should basically allow that no handler is applied. So for your event bus, you will basically set the flag allow no handler. But your commands and queries, they should still have this in place that they check for a handler. So obviously you need at least one separate bus and then you might want to make sure that your query bus only sends stuff through transport like, like synchro synchronously so you can get the result back right away. Um, so basically you can have different flavors of message buses that slightly do things differently. And, and this is why you want to have this middleware stack. And yeah, so just as a final rundown, because I think time is already running short, um, I, I try to not show you too much code and, and basically just give you the, the, the rough concepts of what this message bus does and what is in there um, so that you can decide for yourself, do I have a problem where this kind of looks like it would make sense? And this is just a, a, a big overview again of like, okay, what, what does all this message bus and handling stuff mean? Basically, you have a data class that you create first you just send it via this component to something else, like a transport, for example. And then this is basically inside your one application. And then this message leaves the application into a message broker, into a database in Redis, and is kept there for however long you want. And then at some point, you subscribe to the queue, for example. You, you call the message consume command. You get this message back. And then you can resume, you can, it is automatically sent to the message bus. Now the message bus figures, I received this, I will actually find a handler that should work on this. And this can be your same application, it can be a different application. Technically it could be anything else but a PHP application, anything that can read from the message broker and can read your message can now process this. And this gives you a lot of flexibility, especially if you want to do like MySQL service stuff where you have asynchronous stuff and you don't want to send everything over HTTP. You can now basically have multiple workers that read this message queue and, and process all these messages. 
you, you can have different applications reading it. So, so basically, you can have different services reading the messages from other services when, when they don't need to act upon right away and send a, something back. You can basically um, have, for example, different services that runs in the background and just processes all the, the, the orders that come in and, and sends them to your CRM, for example, or somewhere else. So it gives you a lot of flexibility if, if you basically want to get your data out of your application into somewhere else, or if you just want to process data outside of your current PHP process, outside of your current request response cycle. Um, the take screenshot message is a nice example. If you actually run a Chrome browser in the background to, to fetch the screenshot, it will probably take a few seconds, and you don't want to wait this long with processing requests. So you just send it out asynchronously. I say, yes, I received your request. You will see the screenshot as soon as we're done processing it, and then at some point the message is being processed. You can send even a message back saying, yeah, I'm done. The image is now here. So if you want to show this image or send a customer an email like, yeah, we, we were done doing the screenshot, now you get the information. So it gives you a nice way to um, process data in, in an asynchronous way, which is basically already what I wanted to do here in the summary. Um, so yeah, this is just an example of, of how you could do it in a Symfony application. In your own application, it would roughly look the same. The only downside is all the stuff that you configure your message bus with, you have to do manually by, by actually do, doing like the, the register transports and, and all the handlers and stuff like that, which is fine. It's just a little bit more lag work than we have to do with Symfony, but you can do it outside of, of Symfony 4. And yeah, it's, it's an, a nice way to basically rethink how you handle data in your application and, and it, should it actually happen synchronously. And the nicest thing is that it hooks into your, the, the, the whole Symfony lifecycle thing where you have the profiler where you can always look which message was sent around, which handler uh, reacted to it, what kind of data was in that message. So, so you get, get a nice feedback because it, it's very nicely integrated into your Symfony application. And there's also a nice debug command, which basically tells you you have all these buses with all these handlers that, that handle all these messages. So it gives you a nice feedback net. Otherwise, when, when you're using third-party tools, you might not have, which is a really nice thing to have. And yeah, so that's it. Basically, I want to give you the idea of what can you do with it, where does it make sense for us. You can even use it outside of your request response stuff. For example, I used it in an example where we um, processed in the background lots of monthly orders, subscription orders that we had. We basically, instead of just having one CLI job that ran everything synchronously, we, we send out batches of messages like, this is the first part of all this that someone should handle, and this is the next one. And then we, we could basically fan out all, all these processes and make things way faster and also way easier to read because now I have very compact code. Like I, I just want to look at one order instead of just, okay, I have this orders catalog thing and all, all the clients and I have to fetch all the other data and you, you end up with this huge object graph of all the stuff that you need and then you don't, what, what, what are they actually doing there? So it's, it's, it's a really nice thing to encapsulate smaller processes for you and, and even get ki kind of implicit workflows going if you want, which is really nice. So I encourage you all to check it out. All right, with that, um, thank you all for your attention and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them at me.